Welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. I'm Peter Gross, co-host of the original Wild Kingdom with Marlon Perkins and Jim Fowler. Most of us have seen movies or television shows where sharks have been portrayed as marauders who prey on unsuspecting swimmers or smaller fish in the sea. But many Wild Kingdom episodes illustrate how sharks and other predators are an important part of the food chain in our underwater world. Oceans cover 70% of our planet, yet we still have much to learn about this important ecosystem. Modern technology has enhanced our ability to study the ocean with minimal disruption to their habitat. Human involvement in recent legislation to protect underwater creatures allow for the resurgence. There's more good news to come in the Wild Kingdom, so sit back, relax, and enjoy Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom right here on RFD TV. Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom is presented Mutual of Omaha. Hello. Welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. One of the most controversial animals in the world today is the porpoise, sometimes called dolphin. He's a mammal, the same as we are, and of course breathes air. His ancestors once lived on land, but returned to the sea millions of years ago. Porpoises have the largest animal vocabulary known to man, and we know they communicate with each other by utilizing peculiar squeaks and clicks. These sounds are part of an amazing vocabulary that consists of over 60 words. Some scientists say that porpoises can be taught to understand sounds produced by men, and that he's an animal of great intelligence. To see how smart he is, we decided to capture one, study his progress in learning, and finally, hop skip around the world and sea porpoises perform almost unbelievable feats in such faraway places as Port Elizabeth in South Africa, Kulangata in Australia, Whaler's Cove in Hawaii. It isn't easy to catch a porpoise. The people who really know how to do it are from the Seaquarium in Miami, Florida. We joined them on their especially equipped catching boat. It takes a ton of net to catch a porpoise, and it must be stowed aboard in precise pattern. Jim and I were going to carry out an underwater assignment, so I had my scuba gear with me when I met our skipper, Captain Hansen. One look at him and I knew our expedition was in the hands of a real veteran of the sea. The huge net is now loaded. And here's the plan of action. The capture boat tows along two smaller boats. When we find porpoises, one small boat swings out to head them off. The other serves as an anchor for the net, which is paid out from the big capture boat as it swings around to encircle the porpoises. The boats join up again to tie off the net and make the capture. So we put out to sea on a search that may take an hour, a day, even a week. All eyes are trained on the water for the first glimpse of a rolling porpoise fin. Morning gives way to afternoon. The subtropical sun burns hotter as the search goes on. In the blinding glare, your eyes play tricks. But no, those are porpoises. Porpoises are fast and smart, and we have to be fast to outsmart them. Mans the small boats ready to cast off. Every man knows his place and his job.
My job is to release the net when the order comes down. This is it. 3,000 feet of net spin out into the water in a matter of seconds. Captain Hansen's diagram comes to life as the net is strung around the porpoises from surface to ocean floor. Our boat swings back and forth between the net and the capture boat to keep the porpoises from escaping before the net can be closed. We can't tell for sure how many porpoises there are, but so far they've given no sign of knowing that a net's being drawn around them. Finally, the circle is complete, and the net is tied off to seal the enclosure. Captain Hansen leaves the bridge to direct the actual capture. Foam rubber pads in the boat prevent injury to the porpoises when they're taken aboard. And the sling is used to hoist them from the small boat to the capture boat. Now begins the job of pulling in the net, drawing the circle ever smaller around the porpoises. There's trouble below. Difficulty in pulling in the net indicates that it's caught on something. If we aren't careful, the porpoises can escape. It was for just such an emergency that I had on my scuba gear. Marlin was right behind me. And here's the trouble. The net's caught on a coral rock. It's easy now to count our catch. There are three handsome specimens. They don't seem to be concerned because their sonar equipment tells them that the net is there. So they stay in the center away from it. They could easily jump over the top. But when they meet an obstacle, instinct drives them around it or under it. So it's important that the net touches bottom all the way around. Of course, they still must surface frequently for air. Now we can get on with the work of pulling in the net while Jim finishes checking it. As the circle of the net grows smaller, the job grows more difficult and more ticklish. The porpoises can no longer avoid the net and finally attempt to go through it. To keep from injuring them, we want to bring them in as quickly as possible. The big danger is that they might get tangled in the net and not be able to come up for air. If that happens, the porpoise will drown. The net's very small now and it's all we can do to hold it against their struggling. 
man overboard, in real danger of being trapped in the net. The other two porpoises are still fighting, and as we pull our man to safety, the net slacks off a bit, and one of them escapes. We have to let him go, because we have our hands full with this one that's threatening to swamp our boat. And now the final task of pulling in 500 pounds of fury. We need all the help we can get. Once he's captured, the porpoise stops all fighting. Since he breathes air like we do, he'll be comfortable out of the water during the long trip home on the capture boat as long as we keep his skin from drying out. I won't say that he knows what I'm doing, but porpoises are smart, and now he seems to know that he's in no danger. After we'd captured our porpoise, we returned to the Seaquarium at Miami, where Scrappy, that was our name for him, was put into training for the porpoise show. To study the intelligence of a porpoise, Jim and I attended porpoise school every day. The instructor was Jimmy Klein. The trainer's first challenge is to convince his students not to be afraid of him and to rely on him for food. A porpoise is a born fisherman, but here he must learn to take fish that someone else has caught for him. He catches on quickly enough. Bit by bit, he's coaxed into rising farther and farther out of the water to earn his reward. Now our friend Scrappy is out for the basketball team. First, he must become familiar with the ball. And again, he's rewarded with a fish each time he progresses one step further. Next, he must learn to balance the ball on his nose in order to throw it. Fortunately for the trainer, a porpoise consumes about 25 pounds of fish a day, so there's no danger he'll lose his appetite. Now, how long will it take Scrappy to get the idea he's to toss the ball? Not long, and with that reward, he'll remember the lesson. Step by step, they develop mastery of complicated tricks in a very short time. There's always that reward. But in addition to the reward, once the porpoises have learned a stunt, they seem to thoroughly enjoy performing it. Jumping is natural activity for a porpoise. So once they become familiar with a pole by swimming near it, they soon learn to jump over it. This is basic training for all jumping stunts. long, Scrappy is taking the high jump. Jumping leads to more complicated tricks. A roll of paper is an unfamiliar object, but now the porpoise understands the training routine, so he doesn't hesitate to take the paper and return it. Always hungry for a reward, they're eager to earn it. The paper becomes a cigarette, and now the trick is more difficult. It takes a little practice for a porpoise to judge the distance and time his movement. 
The class seems excited. Who will be the first to master this one? It's our friend Scrappy. To become a star performer, a porpoise must have complete confidence in his trainer to the extent of actually leaving the water and relying on his friend to help him back in. And of course his friend has to come through with a fish. Shaking hands may appear easy, but here the animal is performing a completely unnatural feat, standing out of the water. And all the while, they seem to be laughing about it. This develops into one of the most difficult tricks of all, the tail walk. In this trick, the animal's powerful flukes pound the water to raise his 500 pounds until he appears to be standing on the surface. comes in the big show. Jimmy Klein blows on the conch shell, and his graduate students delight the audience here at the Miami Seaquarium with their dazzling high jumps and all the other tricks they've learned in corpus school. Higher and higher. act calls for real coordination. Watch it in slow motion. Now it's time for Scrappy to show how much he's learned. Jimmy extends his ladder to go higher. Can Scrappy jump that high? From underwater, the porpoise is called upon to spot his target and judge the distance, get up speed, and launch himself like a missile so as to delicately take a fish from his trainer's hand. Can he do it? Watch. One way of measuring intelligence is to determine the ability to learn. Porpoises have learned to perform almost unbelievable feats, which indicate a high degree of intelligence. And everywhere porpoises perform, there is at least one outstanding act. So let's take a trip around the world to see these outstanding performances. First, let's go to Port Elizabeth, South Africa with Jim. At Port Elizabeth, we're visiting the ocean area. South Africa's most popular marine exhibit. By tossing rubber rings into the water, in this act, the trainer shows off his pupil's uncanny ability to master a complicated routine. If that weren't difficult enough, here's the same trick with dark glasses. Next stop on our fast trip is Whaler's Cove in Hawaii. Here, a replica of an old whaling ship serves as a grandstand, and island mermaids perform with the porpoises. Climax of the show, 
is the performance of the spinning porpoises. With one flip of their flukes, these great athletes leap spinning into the air, a really remarkable demonstration of aquatic acrobatics. Down under in Australia, there's a place with the wonderful name of Kulangata. They call this spot Point Danger. Highlight of the show here is a wild game of water polo. The contest is between teams of different species of porpoises. One black, the other white. Whoops! The team works a little ragged. But it doesn't matter who wins. After the game, both teams will celebrate with big fish dinner. Returning to the United States, we wind up our tour at Marine Land of the Pacific. This is an outstanding exhibit near Los Angeles featuring whales, walruses, sea lions, otters, and of course, porpoises. The music department cuts loose with the dolphin drag. If there's one thing a porpoise doesn't need, it's a life preserver. Now meet Smiley in a rare exhibition of skill and courage. Another entry for the Seaside Music Festival. To climax the show, two highly intelligent animals, a dog and a porpoise, team up for the grand march around the pool. The show's over here at Marine Land of the Pacific, but around the world the show goes on as audiences everywhere are held spellbound by the masterminds of the sea. It seems that wherever you go in the world, the porpoise enjoys great popularity. And porpoises have always been considered a friend of man. Since early times, they've followed his ships, playing and racing in the wakes of their bows. To the sailors of today, he is still a good omen, a friend of the open sea. As a result of this natural affinity with man and the ability to learn quickly, some scientists think that the porpoise ranks in intelligence with the highest primates and can be trained to communicate with us. Its intelligence and its remarkable skill at using echolocation to find its way has caused the mastermind of the sea to be the subject of worldwide research, research from which man may benefit in our own lifetime and research which brings us ever closer to understanding the secrets that hide in the dark waters of the wild kingdom. The company with health insurance for people of all ages has presented Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Like what you saw? Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube for more exclusive content. And visit our website at wildkingdom.com.
Mutual of Omaha. Protect your kingdom.